Let's start part 17 of our Bible study through Philippians. Now, we're going to cover Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Uh, the, we're starting to get into a section that I use oftentimes where I do marriage counseling or whenever I perform a wedding ceremony. And so you might hear me reference in relationships with a spouse. But these verses are actually talking to believers. And uh, every believer should act this way towards each other, but especially so much so for spouses who are believers. And so we're, uh, in verse 3 it says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look to the interest, not only his own interests, but also to the interest of others. And so these are very challenging verses. This is how we are to act towards each other um, just in everyday life. And uh, we can see that this would change our relationship dynamics no matter what relationship we're discussing. And so the first instruction is do nothing out of selfish ambition. I can remember at one point Rachel and I were doing uh, The Love Dare. Uh, it was a book that came out of Fireproof. and It was a little journal and day one issued you a challenge and it said do nothing out of selfish ambition towards your wife today. Uh, I got to tell you I thought, oh, this isn't going to be a problem. But the more I looked at it, even the littlest things can be so selfish. And so I challenge you to really look at what you do today that's selfish. Um, another way that you can look at this is, what are the things that you desire? Um, whenever we have a selfish ambition, it means that we desire to advance our own kingdom. Uh, whenever we're very clearly told that as followers of Christ, our goal should be advance the kingdom of God. And then the next thing it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition, and then it tags on, or conceit. conceit. Sometimes they'll say vain conceit or empty conceit, depending on the translation. And what this means is do nothing out of a exuberant or excessive appreciation of your own worth or value. Now, I hear so many sermons that talk about how good you are and about how much God loves you and how much you're valued, and all those things are true. But I think what happens oftentimes is we hear this over and over again is, oh, you're valuable, oh, you matter, oh, you're so important, that we start to think that we're more important than God. And even bigger than that, I think we get to where we think we're more important than other people. And that is not true. And, and so that's what it means to do stuff out of conceit. It's that we do it out of a feeling of, I'm more important than fill in the blank. Um, and we can't live that way as Christians. We must value each other because of uh, what we call the imago dei. It's that we're all created in the image of God. And because we're created with God's image, we all have value to God. And so it says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Um, I put a note here that says, Do it out of true humility. I see too many people who do it out of false humility Oh, I'm just not that good. Just because they want to hear a compliment or because they want to feel like they're, they're lowering themselves, even though in their mind they're just doing it for selfish reasons. You cannot be humble for selfish reasons. Humility and pride never go together. So, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Um, that simply what means what it sounds like. It's that you start to feel that other people what they desire and what they want is more important than your opinions and your thoughts. Uh, it doesn't mean that you let people walk all over you, but it means that you put value on other people. And uh, you say, you know what? I can make sacrifices because this person is important. Uh, it ends with, um, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. I talk about in marriage counseling that sometimes you've got to not only look at your own likes and your own interests, but as a spouse, you have to start saying, what does my wife like? What does my husband enjoy? What are some things that we can do together? And uh, I think the same is true in church relationships. Sometimes all we care about is our own interest. What kind of music do I like? How do I like the lights at church? What group of people do I like to hang out with? What sports, what hobbies, what pastimes do I want to talk about and enjoy? And, and what we have to see is, is that that's selfish. And we must not look, it's okay to look at our own interest, but we also have to look at the interest of others. And, and so just a few questions for you is, are you more advancing your kingdom or are you all about advancing God's kingdom? 
Luke 2.49, I think is just beautiful because Jesus has been missing. He's a young man and he's missing. And his parents are going back to look for him and they find him in the temple teaching. And he looks at him and he goes, why are you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? That's how I want to be. I want to be about my father's business. I want to be about my father's kingdom. I want to be about growing God's kingdom and not about growing Ross's kingdom. And so whose kingdom are you advancing? Whose kingdom do you want to advance? Are you about God or are you about you? The next thing is, is who is most important to you? Um, do you feel like you have to always get your way? Or do you consider others more important than yourselves? Uh, sometimes we just think that we're the only person that matters. And we have to get beyond that. As followers of Christ, we must put others value and we must see how valuable they are to Christ. And the last question is, is, what interests do you need to give up to make room for others' interests? If you're all about what you want, if you're all about your own interests, then you're not making room for others' interests. 